If you've ever gone looking around to buy a new Xbox controller, you've probably come across the Xbox Elite controller. This is Microsoft's in-house uh, Elite controller. There's other controllers from brands like Scuf, but this is the Elite Series 2 from Microsoft. The thing about the Elite controllers from Microsoft is that they're sold at a huge markup compared to regular controllers, costing about three to four times what you can buy a regular controller for. So it does seem very overpriced, but... Let's get to what comes with the controller. In the box, you get this hard carrying case that your Xbox controller comes in that you can throw it in a bag or whatever. And it's a premium feeling case. You get what you pay for with this controller. Uh, back here is a USB-C port to charge the controller while it's in the case. We'll get to that in a minute. But whenever you first open up the case, you're presented with the Xbox Elite controller. So this is the Series 2 specifically. So at the bottom here, you have extra D-pad. I have the uh, circle one on here right now. Four back bumpers, extra thumbsticks, six in total if you count the ones that are on the controller, and a key to adjust tension of the thumbsticks. If you pull the controller out of the case here, you can see that there's a magnetic charging dock that sits right here so you can plug it in. And uh, you can put this on your desk or whatever, and it magnetically attaches to the controller to charge it. They include a decently long xbox branded cable so that you can plug it up just like with the case and the controller it's a nice premium braided cable it's the xbox logo on there you can see it so coming around the back of the controller this is where your uh, four additional back paddles go and up here you have trigger stops so if you're playing a racing game you want to have the full length of your triggers but say you're playing call of duty or apex or shooter game you can flick it all the way to where it only goes a little bit so you can shoot really fast and it does that on both sides and then there's a setting in the middle to where see this is the tightest and then this one it goes down a little more see or you just have them off pretty much everything with the elite controller is magnetic from the d-pad if you want to swap it out for the regular one to the thumbsticks you're going to swap them out do like that and put the different stick on that side everything's magnetic you can swap it up you flip the controller over to where the paddles go on the back the longer ones go on the bottom and the shorter ones go on top and it's this little micro switches so activate really fast and you can map them to whatever buttons you want on the front but by default uh these four buttons will be mapped to the four face buttons let's put the other paddles on here real quick So, aside from that, the only difference between this controller and a regular Xbox controller is that it comes with this little key to change the tension of the thumbsticks. So let's put this case off to the side. If you grab your controller, let's say you think that's too loose, you want a little more tension on your aiming, you can take it off, and then there's a little keyway. You just stick this in there, and just turn it to the right. And then the stick will be stiffer and harder to push. It probably doesn't translate that well on camera, but the stick has a fair bit more tension. It feels like more like Xbox 360 controller now as compared to this one over here, which is really loose. And just like how you can tighten it, you can just take it and then turn it back. And now it's back to stock. And you can just put that back on. Grabbing a regular Xbox controller here to compare. So this Xbox controller, it has elite sticks in it. So it's not a perfectly stock Xbox controller, but... Normally, you can't swap the sticks on regular Xbox controller, but just comparing build quality. So, you know, you just have your regular headphone jack, all that stuff on the bottom. Most important part is that this guy takes batteries. I have a rechargeable pack in here, but the Elite has a built-in rechargeable battery pack, which is why it includes the charging case and all that. So this one's trying to turn on. Oh, well. But... The Series X controller over here, it has a share screenshot button. You can map that do different things on your Xbox and your computer. But over here, instead, you have a Profiles button to swap between profiles. What the Profiles button does is you can say map that you want this trigger to be mapped to this paddle. And it'll save it. You have to use the Xbox accessory software. And then it'll save it to that profile. And then you can tap between the profiles. And you have different ones like a racing game or a shooting game and, you know, stuff like that. 
but yeah, the build quality is 100% different on these controllers. I don't have the stock sticks on these. Normally, they're fully plastic, uh, but they're nice metal on these. It's a nice blackout look with the contrast with the metal and stuff. So the Xbox button on the Series X controller is kind of squishy, but then on the Elite controller, it's a micro switch. And this brings us to another one of the main differences. You can go into the accessories app where you set up your profiles and make this whatever color you want. I just picked red because, you know, in the dark it looks nice. I can cut off some lights real quick. Yeah, so this is what it looks like with no lights, you know. You can make it whatever color you want though. Green, blue, red. I just picked red. But the whole front of the Elite controller is like this soft touch rubber plastic. Uh... And then on the back, it's also that rubber-coated soft-touch plastic all around, like, the center portion of the controller. The grips, instead of just being tactile bumps, like on the Series X controller, but it's still plastic, the grips are full rubber on here that's textured. Even though the Elite controller comes with a charging dock, you can still just use it wired with your computer or your Xbox or just charge it that way. Series X controller, it's all plastic. If you're looking at the Elite Series 2, it's all like this silver gunmetal look up here that matches the back bumpers. Well, this controller won't necessarily make you better at a game. It does give you some more options with the paddles and the trigger stops and just more customizability than a regular controller would have. Like, you can modify a regular controller to add the customizable sticks, but this comes with that out of the box. It comes with uh, adjustable D-pads and stick tension and uh, back paddles and all those other things. So it won't necessarily make you better at a game, but if you just want a premium controller, it's where it's at, honestly. Now, the glaring issue, though, is that you can buy, like, four of these controllers for the price of one of these, maybe three last i checked but uh anyway it's expensive you know so at the end of the day would i recommend this controller well only if you're buying it for yourself you know like if you have an xbox in your living room and you consistently play with people i'd probably get like three regular controllers instead if you consistently play with people on your xbox and stuff but if you just want to use it on your pc and it's your controller and you just want to have a nice premium controller for yourself yeah this is probably the best bet honestly I've used it for a few months now, just playing stuff like Call of Duty, uh, Modern Warfare 2, and Apex on and off. And the back bumpers, while there is a little bit of a learning curve, and you have to, you know, just get used to not touching the face buttons, because that's what I have a map to, it's you know, way better, because, say, you're aiming your gun, but you need a crouch or jump or whatever, you can just do all that on the back without ever having to move your thumb off the uh, right stick. So it's way better for gaming, you know. At the end of the day, I do still think it's overpriced because you can probably buy a regular Xbox controller and add paddles and sticks and have it still come out to less than 100 And this retails for about 180 right now, I'm pretty sure. I'll, I'll double check that in post. But yeah, there's about $180. And it's basically just for people who don't want to tinker with their controller because you can absolutely modify your controller and add all the things that you want for a little less than what this costs but if you just want a controller and you just want to have it ready to game this is exactly where it's at but it is quite overpriced but it's very premium and even though they've had lots of issues with stick drift microsoft's typically really good about fixing it under warranty uh, i've known a few guys i've had issues with it and microsoft's just fixed it because for whatever reason, these are a lot more prone to stick drift than a regular Xbox controller. But Microsoft typically fixes it for free. That's the only caveat. But other than that, it's probably the best controller that you can buy for Xbox or your computer. Anyways, that's all for me. I'm out. Peace.